Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. If this is your first time here and you like what you see, why don't you consider subscribing? This is the first part of Wreath Base Bootcamp, which is so hard for me to say and I don't know why. Today we're starting off with ruffles and curls. I'm going to show you how to do a whole wreath full of ruffles and then we're going to add the curls just as a variation. So this is some fabric mesh. It's cut at 10 inches. 10 inches wide, it's cut at 10 inches. I'm just going to put it off to the side. There are 24 pieces of that. Pieces of that. This is polyjute mesh from a craft. Both of these are from Craft Outlet. This is 10 inches wide and it's cut at, let's see, I always say like 18 to 19, but usually at 19. This one is cut at 19. Yeah. Because I like to get the 18 for the wreath and the one in the middle. But this is a Dollar Tree wreath form. It's wired with 12 pipe cleaners around the outside, six around the inside, one in the middle. There'll be a link up there on how to do it. So with ruffles, I usually always cut under 20 because I can, if I cut at 20, I always end up short one. So I cut under 20. Uh, and to do a ruffle, I take the mesh, fold this edge under. I mean, you can do a hard, a hard fold right there. All you want to do is make sure that's sucked in and then ruffle it straight up the middle. And you don't have to make sure you're like exactly in the middle. You don't have to follow one of the lines. Just, just get it somewhere in the middle. This is our ruffle. You can start on the inside, the outside. I don't favor one or the other. But I think I usually, I think more times than not, I, I do start on the inside. And then halfway through, I'm like, why didn't I start on the outside? So I'm going to put that in, give it two or three twists, and then rinse and repeat. So fold it under, up the middle, fold this edge under. You only want to fold it under about an inch. Just enough so where all those cut edges aren't sticking out. Um, if you're using any other mesh, you could use a wood burner. You can't with this because it has a jute in it. It'll just burn. It won't like melt. When I'm putting these in, usually my inner row goes with the curve. Like it's placed in here. I can never explain this because I don't know the orientation. <laughs> like, it's placed with the curve, and when we go on the outside, they'll be placed vertically. This is horizontally to me. See how it goes like this across the inner ring? And then when we turn it, this would be vertically. So, I put these in horizontally. because I like the way everything kind of nests together when I do that. So again, fold it under, up the middle, and I can usually get that part under without actually having to fold it just by the way I hold it. And whether I start on the inside or the outside, I always do the middle last because if I run out of mesh, I can put a different mesh in the middle. And that is almost always covered up by a sign, an embellishment, something. Not a completely different mesh. Like I can't put a hot pink mesh in here and think that nobody's going to see that, but <clears throat> I have plenty of half empty rolls of natural colored mesh. So you're going to see how dense this is after, um, after everything's done before I add the curls. I don't know that I would, hmm. I mean, you can do whatever you want. I don't know that I would feel comfortable, and it, that's such a weird thing to say, like, feel comfortable, but I don't think I would be happy if I made a wreath with this particular match that I'm using right now, and it was just ruffles, because... As you can see, you can still kind of see through it. Now, this is only the first row, 
so it's going to get a little denser, but the only way I would ever do a ruffle wreath like this with just ruffles and one roll of mesh would be if I was using fabric mesh, which that's what we're going to be using next because fabric mesh is very dense. Um, you can't see through it really. Anything like fabric mesh, a heavy foil mesh, you can get away with it. So the whole reason I'm doing these is so that when I start a project, filming a video, I don't have to go through, you know, I don't have to include that part in the video, it can already be made, which just makes things a little bit easier for me. I can just get a couple bases done before I sit down and start videos, and then when I do the video I can say, here's how you make the reef, and link it up above. Trying to make things a little easy on myself. It's just Mountain Dew. It's your birthday. It actually is my birthday today. It is like 5 in the morning. It's my birthday. And yeah. I'm going to go off with my mom later. We're going to go track down the rest of the Christmas clearance at Michael's. Definitely going to grab some tulip bushes. Alright, so now we're on the outside. These are going to go in, like I said, vertically. I'm not the only person who every time I think of vertically and horizontally, I have to say horizontal is like the horizon. So it's like this. I also have to look at my hands whenever I say left side or right side. I do this. I'll get one more in here so you can see. The reason I do the horizontal and then the vertical is that they lock together. Or, no, lock together isn't the right word. They nest together and provide you a little bit more coverage than if you did them all the same way. And the reason these are in the inside are horizontal is because there's more space in between those. It's about the same space, but it just, it covers more space because there's only six ties. And I do always seem to put these in horizontal and then turn them just because that's how I'm working. Like, I don't want to have to come in here like this to put it in. So I twist it a couple times, come underneath and turn it. Yeah, see, these ones are going horizontal so there's space right here between them in this first row. These are going vertical so the top part of this fills in the space between there hiding some of the frame and then these can kind of overlap and hide that side of the frame. And depending on the kind of wreath maker you are I guess you could You could get by with like one roll of mesh this density. I would not use like the um I would not use like the Joann's Michaels Hobby Lobby regular tinsel mesh. 
not tinsel mesh, metallic mesh, just because it's very thin. Like if you had something that had a, a lot of foil in it, it doesn't have to be like deluxe foil, but something that had a decent coverage, you could probably get away with it if you're going to, if you're one of those people that the mesh is just there to support all the crap you're going to put on top of it. There's nothing wrong with those people. I am sometimes those people. Like I'm putting a giant bunny in this wreath on a bicycle in a dress carrying a basket of Easter eggs. So, you're gonna see this mesh because I'm not, I've kinda gotten away from covering everything up with ribbons. Mostly because the ribbons are the most expensive part of the wreath. So if I can get away with using less, that means my ribbon goes further and I charge you less. And still get the same impact with less ribbon. Obviously, that just makes sense. I actually have another cart off to the side over here that is supposed to be for my mesh so it's not all over the place but I keep forgetting it's there because I'm so used to it not being there and that's what I mean see how that one is just that's rolled over so I'm just gonna go with it that's what I mean when I say how you how you fold it and I am using white pipe cleaners on this just because this is what I had in um it's not going to show up, but I would probably, if I had had a natural one, a natural one with natural pipe cleaners or one with brown pipe cleaners because the green mesh I'm putting on top is kind of dark, but I, uh, my hands have been giving me a lot of problems lately and wiring frames is thankfully not my job anymore. I have, uh, outsourced that. I would get excited to outsource it to my mom, but, um, I need her to get me to, I need to get, I need to get her to wire me some more frames with natural pipe cleaners. Which I was looking and I am almost out of round frames. Don't know how that happened, but. Hopefully. Um, I know there's plenty at the Dollar Tree I go to regularly, but I'm not, we're going the opposite way today, so I'm sure we'll pass the Dollar Tree at some point. I can get me a couple. I'm not going to be making as many wreaths this spring, well, this month, really, because uh, I'm running out of room in my house. I'm not selling enough wreaths. Or getting enough views on YouTube to continue spending, you know, three, four hundred dollars a month on materials to make videos. So I'm gonna pivot to something else. I don't know what. <coughs> this this uh, month just might be all about basics.
as always, well, yeah, pretty much as always, um, these wreaths come out to about 24 inches. If you use longer ruffles, they can come out, because I've done some with like, I think the ruffles were like 30 something. What is nine times? Nine goes into 36. Like, I think they were like, I think they were, I think they were about 36 inches. Yeah, because they were wrapped around my smaller cutting mat. Um, I think I'm going to do one of those bases, just have to find the right mesh for it. And if you do that, you do get a, a bigger wreath just because it's, it opens up more because there's so much mesh in it. So that one's probably about, about 26. You know, it might just add another inch on each side, but if you ever need a huge wreath base, that's one to do. Hopefully this is the last one, which means I do have one for the middle. Cool. I'm trying to pair these videos up like I have some that I already filmed but I didn't get pictures of them before I moved on from adding all the stuff to them and I don't want to post a picture as a thumbnail of a completed wreath when I just want you to see the base so I deleted all those and I'm trying to focus on like this one will be ruffles with curls the next one will be poofs with cruffles um just to cover kind of everything without having to do a video of just curls, or a video of just ruffles, or a video of just poofs, so that's how I am uh, trying to do things, and it'll probably be a week, you know, there'll probably be a, a video on, um, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, my normal posting schedule, this one's going in the middle, I usually, just a little, t why is the other side of this pipe cleaner? Um, just a little tip, if you're cutting at 18 and you have the last piece is usually a little bit longer than 18, cut that piece as long as you can, put it off to the side, put your 18 off to the other side, do this base with your 18, and then put the longest one in the middle, just because that's going to make, it's going to, um, it make, you're not going to, what am I trying to say here? You don't want to throw away that extra little bit you're going to cut off. Like, say it's an extra four or six inches. You're not going to throw that away. Like, don't do that. Just put it in here so you don't have it over here and this is bigger. You know what I mean? It makes sense to put it in the middle just if there's any uh, inconsistency in size. So this is a, um, what is this? A ruffle base. And let me take back what I said earlier because this is pretty full. I mean, once you added some bows and tails and bows if once you added a bow and some tails or you know a, I mean if you added a sign because I can see through here but that also might just be I'd have to do a little finagling I don't like touching the mesh too much after I get it in there because the more you touch it the more it just starts to shred but yeah so that is your a ruffle base if you want the middle don't put this one in there and uh yeah that is very basic i think i think it's pretty easy to do a lot of people have trouble with the poof just because you kind of have to get them uniform or you have to measure uh i don't have a problem with the poof i think this is probably this takes a little bit more time, but you also have a lot more movement. Like, I want I want texture, I want movement. So, this is our cruffle base, and now we're going to transform it into a cruffle and curl base by adding some 10-inch curls in this olive green fabric mesh. And I cut 12, because I'm just putting them around the outside. So, they'll be at, you know, there's 24 of them. I cut 24 because I'm just putting them around the outside where there are 12 ties. So each one is going to get a curl and all I'm doing, this is, I consider this curl side up, I see the curls coming up, and this is curl side down. So you want to turn them curl side up and just roll it, don't squeeze it to death, don't have to do any of that, make a cross, 
pinch them together. And then these are going, again, vertically. So I'm going to put these in horizontally. And I'll probably end up doing, this one will be horizontal, the next one will be vertical. Placement doesn't really matter, but it can make a difference. Like if I had placed all these horizontally, this wreath would look a lot less full. Or if I placed them all vertically, it would look a lot less full too. So by alternating them and letting the ruffles nest into each other, you get a little bit higher coverage by not adding any more mesh. So these end up being about two inches. Yeah, you usually get them about two inches without even, I, yeah, don't measure them. You don't have to do that. Um, but do make sure the cut sides are down when you put them together, just because you want those to the back. So this one went in horizontally. This one's going to go in horizontally as well. And then I'm going to turn it vertically. Because if we leave it like this, which you can do if this is, if this is what you're going for, we leave it like this these are like pushed up against each other but if we turn it we can open that up a little bit does that make sense hopefully So you could also do just curls as a wreath base. I've done that once, and it was such a tra traumatizing experience for me because I did not know what I was doing. I had so many ties. I think it was my first like big wreath I made. Um, it was from Michelle for her birthday, so it was a Mardi Gras wreath, and it had a big top hat in it, and the curls, I did all curls. So I had purple, green, and gold mesh. A purple, a green, and a gold. Not like purple, green, and gold all together. And I cut them, and I rolled them, and these three rolls of mesh in that wreath, it was huge. But it just, it did not look good. And I think if I did it today, it would be a lot better, but uh, she usually sends me a picture when she puts, you know, when she puts that wreath on the door, like, oh, I'll put my wreath out today, and I'm just like, oh. Don't put my name on that. But also at the same time, I think it's important to, everybody's got those wreaths, right? The ones that you made and you're like, you gave it to somebody and you're like, mm. like my mom put up her Christmas wreath this year. And I don't know if I just didn't notice it last year or if my standards have changed, but I was like, oh God, mom. I was like, I need to make you a new wreath. She said, but I like that one. And I was like, oh. I guess that's a good thing about always carrying a, f a camera around in our pocket now. We can um, take pictures, even if you're not like posting it on social media or listing it on Etsy. You have those pictures to look back on and say, look at your older wreaths and say, what is it that I don't like about this? Like The thing that I did not like about the Mardi Gras wreath is that, first of all, those curls were a lot. Um, it was a lot of work, and... I did not choose the best mesh to work with because that that uh, that wreath is like 95% phrase. Like it started out as a coral wreath and now it's like a freight wreath. So I guess if I did that, I would probably, you know, use the wood burner nail, which you can't use on fabric mesh either, so. Leave it for just your foils. But yeah, like I was saying, go back and look at... Can you stay there? I'm trying to be a professional YouTuber here. Go back and look at the things you made and say... Okay. 
that's what I didn't like. So if I were to make this again, what would I do to change it? And I also think that you can go on Etsy, on Pinterest, on Instagram, wherever, and look at other people's wreaths and see, you know, I'm telling you to critique them. Don't, don't tell them what you think. Just look at it and say, okay, I don't like, I don't like that mesh. That mesh doesn't go, uh, you know, the, the wreath is too big, it's too flat. And when you identify the things you like and you don't like, it makes whatever you're doing a lot easier. So like as much as I like to put stuff in a wreath, when I see those wreaths where you can't even tell it's supposed to be a wreath, like if somebody's holding it up and it takes up the entire, the you can't even see their body, it just looks like a, like a, um, decapitated head on top of a wreath, on top of a bunch of stuff. Like, I don't like that. I don't have to tell people I don't like that. Like, I don't have to comment and be like, eh, I wish your wreath had less crap in it. But once you identify that, you can be like, okay, well, that's not what I like. So I'm not going to make a wreath like that. Now, I do make wreaths like that sometimes, but uh, it's not an all the time thing for me just because it's not really my, my thing, you know? Like, I look at it, and I'm like, it's nice. Like, I'm not going to say that you don't have a nice wreath there, that you clearly have gotten a gym membership to hold up. Like, you, you had to join the gym to be able to support that monstrosity in size, not in the way it looks. But, and I like that. For me. And also, every time I've made a really big wreath that is full of stuff, full of custom things that I've all made for it, they just don't sell as well because... They're expensive. You know, if I sit there and I make all the embellishments and I, I, you know, I put four rolls of ribbon in one wreath, you're paying for that. Like, I'm not paying for that. You're paying for that when you buy it. Um, and they don't sell as well because not everybody, first of all, not everybody wants a giant Christmas tray stapled to their front door. But they can't afford it. They don't like it. Um... Or like it's, it's just too much, which I guess falls into the same thing as they don't like it. But as much as I like making those, you know, Wicked Witch wreaths and Day of the Dead wreaths and Donut wreath, well, my Donut wreath and my Wicked Witch wreath sold, but they, uh, they don't sell as quickly or as often as something that's just mesh with a bow and a sign and some florals. and trim some of these because I don't If you are not good at, um, like, I have a lot of problems with my hands, y'all know that. I actually have a paraffin hand spa in my kitchen right now, and as soon as my mom gets here, I am opening it, because she got it for my birthday, well, I ordered it, but it's been sitting on my kitchen floor for, like, a week now, and I'm like, I just want to plug that thing in and stick my hands in it and be so happy in the morning when I wake up, and I can stick my hands in hot wax and wake up my joints and get my, get my body moving, um... But if you have trouble, like, rolling one and then rolling the other, which I do sometimes. And my hands are not terribly bad today. They're not great. They hurt. Um, but you can always roll and then stick them in your bow maker. You know, stick a couple in the bow maker. You can pre-wire them if you want to. Whatever's easier for you. When I was in physical therapy, I said, I think with no, it was when I was in occupational therapy, I said, oh, yeah, I was having trouble, um... Like, I have a lot of problems when I take the dog O-U-T in the morning because my hands are so stiff, I can't open my door. So I have to have a pair of pliers. Like, I can't open the deadbolt. I can unlock the door fine. I just can't open the deadbolt. So I have a pair of pliers in my laundry room that are always out that I use when I can't open the door, which 
the last last couple of weeks it's been pretty often but I, I think I, I said something about that to my therapist and she said there is nothing wrong with using whatever you need to to make your life easier I mean isn't that why we don't bake our own bread anymore I mean some people do but isn't it a lot easier to just go buy a loaf than baking it like it's there it is available to you. Why not use it? And if you are making bread, are you are you mixing it by hand, or are you using your your stand mixer? It's one of those things. So whatever you have to do to make things easier, less painful, less complicated, quicker, nicer, do it. This is our last one. And it is going vertically. And the reason I'm only doing these on the outside is because I wanted some of this left over for another wreath. And fabric mesh is very expensive compared to like just metallic mesh. Oh my god. I think this roll was like nine dollars or something. And I didn't put any in the middle because my bunny that I'm putting in there is pretty big. And I might just make a giant bow. And then two other bows, you know. Put some carrots in there. Alright, this one goes vertically. And I always cut these off because I'm like, I'm not going to add anything to that. And then I always have to add them back in because I end up adding stuff. So my thing is I'm not touching those pipe cleaners until the entire wreath is done. You don't have to cut around a bunch of other stuff to get them out. I'm just going to go back through and lift the natural mesh up. that mesh it seems like it most of the time that I'm pulling it's coming from the, the inside row and some from there too okay so that's our base and it is from biggest point from farthest width to farthest width that's 24 inches I mean yeah because it's as big as my mat uh, it's 24 inches round, and I measure from the, like, I push that when I measure, I push the frame down like this, put that where I need to be, then measure out. So this one's, this one's about six. It'll probably be seven or eight once, um, once the bow is on there, but probably, well, I guess it's like five, five to six. But yeah, that is Ruffles. In Carl's. So, yeah, I will be back with poofs and cruffles, which I think is going to make a very big wreath. And then um, a one roll wreath, a 21 inch mesh wreath. Um, th there's a bunch that I want to do. So, this will probably be either a week or two. I'm thinking maybe two now that I'm thinking about it, but we'll see. So, I hope you enjoy that. I hope that helps you out if you are new or if you just needed a refresher or if you just want to know how I do it, um, which is basically 
kind of how everyone does it, I think. I mean, I don't think I do anything special, except maybe the making sure that everything's nesting together. So yeah, give it a try. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And I am going to go have birthday breakfast by myself and wait for my mom to wake up. So you guys have a good day, and I will see you later. Bye.